And now we'll, we'll get our coaches teleconference underway featuring Jackson State and Southern University. Our first coach on the call is Jackson State head coach Rick Kamaji. Good morning, Coach Kamaji. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining us this morning. If you could, uh, a couple of weeks here with the layoff, but the, the, the week is officially here. And if you could uh, talk about some of the things that you guys have got going on and uh, preview the championship, if you will. Well, um, you know, we've been, um, you know, practicing, trying to, you know, stay sharp. You know, you know, sometime when you have a long layoff, you tend to get rusty and you lose um, some of that edge and, and sharpness. And so, well, we've been, we've just been constantly going a little bit every day. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of it has been um, just technique work and going out half pads or no pads at all, you know, just to run and catch and try to, you know, just to stay sharp. You know, uh, we, you know, running our, the base things that we run and just trying to, um, you know, keep our defense, you know, doing our check system, reviewing the review from when you came into camp so that, you know, you, you don't make a lot of mistakes. And so, you know, we're trying to get mistake-free, which we, we know is possibly, you know, impossible to do, but uh, we're trying to work as close to it as as, as possible. And so um, that's where we've been. We've been out almost every day. We've been out over the weekend. We've been out um Saturdays and Sundays, you know, we just just going out for a little while watching film and, you know, and just trying to get a look at the opponent, just trying to stay sharp. Thank you very much, Coach Kamaji. The floor is now open for Jackson State head football coach Rick Kamaji. Please take your phone off of mute by using the command star six. Yeah, Coach Kamaji, this is uh, Roscoe Nance. How you doing? Hey, Roscoe, how are you today? I'm doing great. Congratulations on getting back to the championship game. Well, I, pre- um, I appreciate that. Thank you, Roscoe. Uh, this is a rematch, you know, from uh, an earlier uh, game earlier in the season. How different do you think the two teams are at this point than they were when they played back in September? Well, I, I, I believe that, um, you know, Southern is, um, you know, has um, gotten much sharper um, and, and much keener in what they do and some of the things that, um, you know, they came into our game with, you know, I think they're a better football team at this point. I, I think they've moved on in progression, you know, both offense and defensively. And, you know, you know, we have our hands full, you know, we have to, we're going to have to play a, a solid football game, you know, you know, even though I felt in the first game, you know, we, we dodged the bullet in the first game. They had a guy wide open in the end zone and, you know, a quarterback came up short on a throw, you know, you know, that's not going to happen often. You know, with that team now, you know, I think they're playing with a lot of confidence and a lot of grit, and you know, we're going to have to, um, you know, try to, you know, stalemate them and try to, you know, stay in this ball game. And what about Jackson State? I think, um, you know, I think uh, we're a hungry football team. I think we maintain our hungerness and our desire to uh, want to win a championship. You know, and I think hopefully that, you know, we'll play up to the the level of our desire. And, um, you know, and I'm looking for, you know, a, a great game. Well, how different is Jackson State than it was in that game? Well, I think, um, you know, we you know we, we, we found an identity. We found what we want to do. Um, you know, we were kind of scrambling around a little bit looking for an identity, you know, from an offensive standpoint of view. I think we've, you know, we discovered, you know, what we do best. And uh, we're going to try to play off of that, you know, with other things now. And then uh, from a defensive standpoint of view, I think we've settled in and, you know, uh, you know, stop doing a lot of things that we were doing so the kids can play fast and, and um, you know, let them play instead of trying to um, dictate everything going on. Let them make the, you know, some of the adjustments that they need to make and, uh, you know, stop making so many uh, calls so that, um, you know, we're too many things going on and they can't get into their check system. And, you know, we'll just, um, you know, make a check and let them play out of that check and go from there. And uh, are you guys looking at this as a chance for redemption for letting the one get away last year, or have you moved on from that? Um, I really, to be honest, Roscoe, I haven't even thought about last year's game. Um, I just re- basically, um, or the game this year, you know, this is to get one up in front of you. It's the most important one right now to me. And, you know, and um, some of the things that in the past I can't do anything about, you know, I'm just trying to be the best we can possibly be. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Roscoe.
Hey, Coach, can you talk about uh, the first game and y'all's offensive philosophy? I think y'all had nearly uh, 50 rushing attempts in that game, and y'all really came out in the second half and really established it early on and really, you know, ran it down or, or, and just started running the ball a lot there earlier in the third quarter. Can you talk about why y'all went with that strategy and, and what you saw on tape going into that game and has Southern improved in the rush defensively and how that will affect you going into this game? Uh, there's no doubt they improve um, tremendously. I mean, they – have improved tremendously, and you know, and not just in the rush, but in what they're doing in the passing game. And so they're playing good, solid defense. You know, we we just, uh, you know, we just have to do, you know, what we think is best, you know, for our team and what we think we can do. You know, we have a couple of running backs that we feel that can run, and um, you know, if uh, if our quarterback doesn't, um, you know, uh, has a has a good game, you know, depending on what he does, you know, if he has to have a good game for us to beat him and. I think like most teams do, you got to have your quarterback having a lot of success, not just with his arm, but on the ground as well, you know, uh, um, you know, and doing the things that, you know, people do to try to just keep moving the chains. You know, I don't really care about the, the long bomb as much as I care about moving the chains and ball control, and, you know, and that's what um, we're asking them to do, you know, and so um, – you know, have you know have they gotten better at stopping the run? Yes, they have. I don't think they're going to let us come out there and run the ball like we did. Um, but I think you know, hopefully, we can keep it off balance a little bit between you know mixing up the run and the pass a little bit more than we did last game. Coach, last time y'all met, I think uh, Jackson State was came into the game third overall in the pass defense. Y'all giving up some yards in recent weeks. How do you think your defensive secondary will face against a Southern uh, wide receiver attack that has had a couple guys step up alongside Lee Dawson in the recent weeks? And, and will, will Claw Cox back there for you? Well, I tell you what, you know, you're right about a couple guys stepping up. They have really stepped up and done a fantastic job, in the, you know, in that passing game. And he's probably one of the better quarterbacks that, you know, I've seen in a long, long time. Uh, and the guy's um, very accurate and um, you know, knows what he wants to do. He's comfortable in the offense. And they're going to be hard to control. You know, we just have to make sure that, you know, we're we're, we're not, um, you know, just, you know, you know, giving them the looks that they can get in there and pick at and, you know, and have an easy time picking at it and trying to see, you know, how we can um, keep him off guard a little bit, you know, by, you know, making some changes back there and uh, moving around a little bit and, Hopefully, I'm um, trying to get to him a little bit more. Hey, Coach, this is Roz from the Clarion Ledger. How are you doing this morning? Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. I wanted to ask you, um, after uh, at this point of the season, some teams tend to pick up on the tendencies of other teams. Uh, we saw that against Alabama A&M uh, when you try to rush into the red zone. How are you trying to uh, make sure that you know Southern can kind of pick up on your tendencies but try to make sure that you guys still execute on what your game plan is? Well, you know, it, it's it, it's hard not to, um, you know, most teams, you know, look at tendencies and try to go by tendencies and things of that nature. And I think sometimes tendencies do work, but you know, you got to go with what 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 got you here and what you do best sometimes, and and not worry too much about tendencies. It 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 is man on man and and team on team and. You know, sometimes, you know, you start worrying about getting away from some of the things that you do because of high tendencies and, you you know, you don't have success. But I think, you know, we have to take some of those things and uh, take those tendencies and turn them to opposites, meaning if it's a run tendency, you throw, and if it's a bad tendency, you run, and use it that way, but you got to keep doing what you do best. Um. Two weeks off, uh, one more week left to go. Uh, you hadn't had a game in about um, two weekends, but how do you kind of keep the guys motivated and competitive throughout that time? Well, I, you know, I don't, I don't think it's been very difficult. You know, we, you know, we got our, our, um, we, you know, we got our butts handed to us in the Alcorn game. You know, and you know that might have been the greatest thing in the world that happened for this team. You know, like you can't, you know, we had a lot of desire, a lot of dreams, a lot of things that we were trying to accomplish in the season. You know, and you know, and I, you know, and you know, we didn't accomplish it, but there's, there's, there's a lot more to still accomplish, and so, um, you know, we have to, you know, uh, man up and accept that beating and come back and, and, um, you know, and understand that, you know, uh, each game is a fight. You can't just go out there and show up. You got to go out there and play, and 
um, you know, and so you know you can turn it you can turn a negative into a positive real quick, and I think that's what we've done. Coach, can you talk about Zach Pendleton for a minute? Uh, Twenty yards per catch and leading the swag in yards per game. Can you just talk about what that kind of, what having a deep threat like that brings to an offense and how it opens up the entire field? Well, Zach Pendleton is an outstanding athlete. You know, he's getting double covered a lot now, and a lot of people are you know looking his way and open up some other receivers for us, which is okay. You know, because we um, our quarterback is starting to spread the football around a little bit more than he has, and we and we like that because we got a couple other guys that you know can get up and get things going. You know, without you know if if, if they're double covering Zach, but he's just an extraordinary receiver. He's got a big you know big tall body, six three, six four. He can run. He can move a little bit. Got great hands, you know. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we do we do bank on him for some big catches, and he has made some big catches for us. And um, you know, we're you know we're happy that um, he's healthy and ready to go. And um, you know, hopefully um, he'll make a few big catches for us in this game, and and um, you know help us in certain situations that we really need him. And hopefully now the other guys, um, you know, get an opportunity to show their wares as well as you know their like as the, as some of the guys on the Southern team have now showed their wares, you know, showing that they can play ball too, along with Doss, you know, and you know, and open up our offense a little bit more rather than Zachary, 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 Zachary. Coach, you have a lot of wide receivers. Um, Zach Pendleton obviously has been the most reliable, but who do you think has uh, stepped up on the other end for the wide receivers to help out uh, Pendleton? You know, I think Perkins has stepped up real well, and I think um, Singleton is finally coming into his own, and I'm really happy with that. And McKenzie made some big catches for us um, the game before. So, you know, those guys are really starting to come through now and and make those catches that, you know, we've been hoping they could do. And, and, and Tucker, you know, he's waiting. I'm waiting for a breakout day from Tucker, too. So, And a young man by the name of Possum. And, you know, they all have been working hard. They just haven't been getting a lot of – They've been open, and um, you know we just got to get the ball to them and spread the spread the, the wealth around a little bit more. Coach, I remember talking to you last time. You didn't put much into it, but into the Southern Jackson State rivalry, you acknowledge that it is a rivalry, but you let you know set us another game. How excited do you think your team is heading into a game, knowing that it is knowing the, the championship game, knowing that they are facing Southern, you know, a, a big time rivalry here, rivalry here in the SWAC. <laughs> Could you could you could you mention could you say that again, please? I'm sorry. How excited is your team going to play uh, Southern University in the SWAC title game, given the you know histor- historical significance of the rivalry? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, we're we're super excited. We're super excited about the game. I mean, this is a a big ball game for us. You know, we know that you know it's already listed as a ton of people going to be at the game. When you know they you know that in itself you know says that you know people. Um, know that you know these two teams have historically have um, you know been two of the top teams in the SWAC you know along with uh, Gramlin of course and and you know a few other teams who stepped up in there but um, it's a big game it's a no doubt it's a big game it's a big game for Jackson State I'm sure it's a big game for Coach and his 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 team and so you know we uh, we want to um, you know we want to you know we want to win you know I'm sure there's no sense in not. You know, putting the, you know, you know, holding my tongue. I mean, both. I'm sure that's what it's all about. You know, I mean, uh, try to go in there and have success, and and then send these seniors out. You know, on a great note. You know, that's what it. You know, what that's what we're trying to do. Coach, you got um, the Aaron McCree has really stepped up for you on the defensive end as a linebacker. Uh, talk about the kind of energy that he brings to you guys every single day, and what you expect to see from him on the championship game. Well, you know, he's all over the field. You know, he's a guy that loves to play, and he's all over the field. And we were talking about him this morning, at, you know, coming in uh, uh, the locker room after practice. Um, we were talking about Aaron McCree and, you know, what he brings to the team. He brings a lot of energy. And, um, you know, he, you know, he's fearless. He goes out and plays the game. And I think he sparks the other guys in the playing. I think he's a spark for us to, and, and what he wants to do, you know, and how he plays the game. And he's rough, tough, and um and he's got great speed, and so he'll cover a lot of field, you know. And so um, he um, he's a guy that's been an asset for us, and I'm glad he's, you know, on our team. We've got coach, looking back at the, the, the for first game. Jackson State head coach uh, Rick Comagy, two more questions. Coach. Hello, Coach. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Looking back at the first first game um, this season, 
in that matchup against Cox and Dawson. Were you satisfied with what you did against their wide receiver? And looking now at the emergence of Mike Jones and, and what Willie Quinn is doing uh, in the midseason, um, is their passing game and their wide receiver still a major concern? Is their passing game and their wide receiver a concern? Their wide receiver is more of a concern with the emergence of Mike Jones and Willie Quinn and what they're doing. Well, there's no, there, there's no doubt. I mean, they're doing a great job. I mean, yeah, I think you take away from their running game, um, but I think they can, you know, do a lot of good things on the, you know, with their feet too. But yes, there's no doubt. I mean, uh, a young man can throw the football, and um, those guys are going to get it and um, and doing a fantastic job, you know, for him. And so, you know, they got a, you know, they got a receiver core that, you know, is probably one of the finer receiver cores in the country, and so. You know, we know. You know, we got our hands full. I, our kids are prepared to play, and um, but you know, we we know they're good, and we respect them. We don't we, we don't fear anybody, but we respect them to the utmost. Your thoughts with playing Southern? The two programs met for the first uh, SWAC football championship in '99, and just your thoughts also on uh, playing this championship game and, and the league's move uh, game to to Houston. I'm just very, very proud to have this opportunity to to play in this game. And, you know, and the league moved to Houston. Um, I think, you know, we'll all know that after the game, but I think it's a good move. I think it's a good conference move. I really do. And I think the kids are excited about it, you know, and, you know, it brings on excitement. I think uh, the people are excited about the change of venue because, um, you know, it's, it's a packed house going to be down there. So, uh-huh. And I think it's good for the city of Houston. I think it's good for – uh, college football, and so um, you know we're excited. I'm extremely excited. Please don't think that I'm not. Um, we are definitely excited and and preparing hard to go and preparing ourselves hard to to play a solid football game. Do we have any more questions for Jackson State head football coach Rick Comedy? That sounds good. That sounds good. Well, that sounds like double, double, double. Coach, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you this Friday, 10 a.m., for the official uh, football championship press conference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. That's Rick Comagy, head football coach at Jackson State University. We've got Coach Dawson Odoms now on with us, the head coach at Southern University. Good morning, Coach. If you could uh, talk about your preparations now. It's the week of the uh, Swike football championship. Well, it's just like... You know, the game week, you just got to, you know, get everybody focused on what you got to get done. We just played in a big football game and, you know, just getting the guys focused on this one. And take one day at a time. We'll come in today. We'll have meetings and we'll have practice today and start implementing our game plans for this week. All right, the floor is now open for Dawson Odoms, head coach at Southern University. Hey, Coach. Uh, have you ever – Coach, have you had a chance to look at the game film from Jackson State recently? And what do you what did you see in that game film? And what do you think that your team can do better heading into this game coming up? Well, we looked at it. Actually, I got back. I came back with the team on Saturday and went went right into work. So, you know, there's no time to rest, man. It's a championship, and you know they had they had a lot of time to prepare for us. So, you know, we got started on them right away. And what I think we can do, I mean, we really need to play a bad football game against them the first time. Uh, first, I mean, at halftime, it's a 7-3 football game. And they come out in the second half, and they ran the football on us, and, you know, we didn't um, really do a very good job of stopping them in that game. So, you know, but I think as the season has gone along, we implemented more things in our, in our defense that could help us against certain personnel groupings, and, you know, we feel pretty good about what we are as a football team and what we think we'll be able to do once we play against these guys. Coach, can you talk about your wide receivers versus Jackson State even the back? That's obviously uh, an intriguing matchup given the status of Lee Doss and, and Clark Cox on the other side. Well, yeah, I mean, I think we, <laughs> we've added some receivers since the first time we played. You know, I think our guys are playing with confidence. I think we I think we have a very good quarterback, and I think we have probably one of the better receiving cores. And I think if you give them a chance to make plays, they're more than capable of making plays. So our job is to just make sure we can protect our quarterback and give him time to throw the football if we go through it. So but I really think the team that can control this game in the running game 
is probably going to have the upper hand. So they handed it to us the first time we played running the football. And, you know, they came out in 21 personnel and really pounded us pretty good. So, you know, I don't know why you would change, but I think we got to do a better job and we think we're going to get tested in the passing game, in the running game. But I know if you can stop the run, you got a chance to win football games. Talk about your running game. Go ahead. Coach, can you talk about your running game and Lenar Artillery and also Kyle and Favorite? You know, both guys are very explosive. We saw what those two guys can do on turf this past weekend against Grambling. And, and I think uh, I think Tillery had a long gainer against Jackson State uh, in the first matchup. Can you talk about what kind of – what we expect out of them because they'd be an X factor going into this game? Well, I just think you got to, you know, protect the football and run hard. You know, every yard is going to count. You know, you got to fight for every inch in this game. And, you know, I think those guys are, are pretty good running backs if we can give them some space. I think they're better now uh, late in the year than they were early in the year. I think the freshman understand he's settled down. He's He's got some big play capabilities. And Leonard Taylor, man, he ran the ball really hard the last game we was out. And I can see that every week he's gotten better and better. We're going to need both of those guys, including Darius Coleman, to be playing their best. Hey, Coach, this is Roz from the Clarion Ledger. Um, you both, uh, Southern and Jackson, lost to Alcorn. If you're able to watch film on Jackson State against Alcorn, did you see kind of some similarities on when you guys played Alcorn and uh, what, what what do you think was the key for Alcorn to defeat both you and uh, Jackson State? Well, you know, uh, I think it's turnovers. You know, I think if both teams look at that uh, film, they'll probably say they lost the turnover battle. And when you turn the football over, it makes it difficult for you to win football games. So, Ball security is definitely going to be uh, something that you that you really preach this weekend that you work on because turnovers are usually the difference in big ball games. Yeah, uh, coach, this is our Roscoe Nance. How you doing? Doing all right. How you doing? I'm fine. Um, what do you think is how different uh, Jackson State is at this point in the season than they were when you guys played back in September? I don't think they're no different. You know, I think they're the same team. You know, I, I mean, you don't have to change much when you you been, went pretty much undefeated uh, throughout the conference. And, you know, you survived some close games, but that's the sign of a good team. And, you know, they lost lost to Alcorn, but, you know, they still, when you watch the film, they, they are who they are, man. You don't you don't reinvent the wheel. We're not going to reinvent the wheel. We we're going to line up and we're going to try to do what we do a little bit better in this game. And to me, that's how I think you you prepare, man. You can't go out and just start changing stuff. And, you know, each week you got to have an identity, know who you are, and that's what you got to hang your hat on. Coach, can you talk about emotionally um, the opportunity as a first-year head coach to lead uh, such a, a program with that history uh, into to the championship game? Uh, man, I haven't even thought about it. I got back here on Saturday after the Bayou Classic, and I went to watch a film for a little bit. Then I went home and came back in here on Sunday, man. You know, I think, you know, I'm more of an old school coach. You know, you know, I'm, I'm probably just like Coach Cummingy, man. He's been doing this a long time, and I, I respect what he's been able to do everywhere he's been. And you know, and the only way you get where you are and get these opportunities is through your hard work. And you know, I think once the season over, I reflect back on it and say, you know, we did some remarkable things and we got one more game to close out the year and we're going to try to make sure we do all we can to win. Your your thoughts on the on the conference uh, moving, uh, having the game in, in Reliance Stadium, NFL Stadium, and, and in Houston, Texas? I, I just think it's great, man. I, anytime you can put, you know, a HBCU in, in towns that are – in, in big cities that are largely populated by African Americans, you you got a chance for growth and expansion and excitement to happen, and you know, and that's what kind of city Houston is. You know, it's it's a great place for for SWAC to move the game, and I think it's gonna be a electrifying crowd, and uh, we're excited and grateful for representing the West and Southern University being there. Hey, coach, can you talk about? 
Uh, did your team have any, like, a big odd going into the first matchup in Reliance Stadium against Houston? And how do you think playing in a game like that opening the year, knowing the environment, knowing, knowing the surroundings, being, being in Houston twice along with Texas Southern, do you think that benefits your team at all having been there, done that so far this year? Uh, I mean, I just think you understand your surroundings. But when we were there against Houston, it's not going to be the kind of crowd probably that we're going to anticipate it being playing against Jackson State. And it was the first game of the season and not as much as that is on the line. So, you know, the good thing is that we've been there before. We played in that stadium. But just remember, we lost when we played there. So that's probably what we remember most. So the thing, again, the chance to go back, you know, that's all our fans talked about from the start of the season was going to Houston three times. Well, we granted them that wish. Now, now they'll probably show up, you know, as Jaguar Nation do. We'll be – We'll be a lot of people that are rooting for us, and, and we just to be excited to be in that event. But we got to get a football team ready to play. Hey, Coach, um, you know uh, quarterback Clayton Moore and Jackson State's running game. Um, what have you done specifically uh, to kind of make sure that you can sub Jackson State on the ground since that seems to be their, their strength lately? Well, you know, we go pay attention to some stuff today, but they can run the football. And they're very good at it. You know, they're big up front, uh, got good fullbacks, and quarterback you know, has been making good decisions. So it's going to be tough to stop them on the ground. What you got to do, you got to tackle well, and, and you got to be in position. And you just got to understand what you're trying to get done. And just understand this is going to be a game that's, that, that's probably old school football. You know, they're going to get downhill, and your guys got to be up for the challenge. Coach, do you feel like your team is playing its best football of the year? And if so, do you feel like it's playing at, you know, the highest peak that it can, or do you see room for improvement? And if so, what areas? Well, yeah, I see a lot of room for improvement. You know, we still don't have that that killer instinct. You know, you just got to, you know, we was up 27-3 to against Grambling, and, you know, we allowed, you know, two touchdowns, and now all of a sudden it's a momentum swing, and, you know, you get a couple turnovers, and, you were able to put the game away, but you just got to put that game away before you let them back in it. So, you know, we're playing better, but we can still play even a lot better, and I think we will. I think this week of practice will be a lot of focus. We don't – I don't like our guys after, you know, a bye week for us, their focus, because it's just – it's hard to get them focused on the next game with, with so much time off. So, I like playing back-to-back games. I think against Grambling, we're able to get some stuff out of our system that – that we normally don't do. We had some misalignments and stuff that that is not normally our football team. So, But I think we'll be much better this week, and I'm excited about getting another week of practice and getting a chance to focus on Jackson State. Coach, uh, the last time you played Jackson State, obviously uh, lost on a on a low low throw by um, by Dre Joseph. Have you talked to Dre Joseph and also, I guess, Coleman, who was a receiver? How have those two kind of looked back at that matchup, and how are they responding uh, coming out of uh, coming into the championship weekend? Oh man, they're gonna be all right. We don't, you know, coming off the field, you know, we were shaking hands and. Um, giving congrats to Jackson State for a hard-fought win. And, you know, I told our guys in the in the locker room, if you know, that's just one game. So if you take care of business and you get it, you, you understand, and you take care of business, you get a chance to probably see that team again. And you're getting that opportunity. Now what you go do with it? And, and that's what it's all about. You know, we're fortunate to be in this predicament, but our guys fought hard. We lost that football game, but we're getting a second chance. And then, then we got to go make the best of it. Coach, Coach, Coach uh, compare and contrast the quarterback matchup on uh, Dre Joseph and uh, Clayton Moore. Uh, I just think right now Dre Joseph is probably playing as good as anybody in the country. You know, um, I mean, he's got some guys around him um, that, you know, he can throw it. Dre is probably a, a better passer. Um, Moore is probably dual threat, you know. Uh, is he as good a passer as – Dre Joseph, he can be when you watch film. I mean, he throws the football very well. He's a very good runner. You know, I think he's a better runner than than Joseph, so it makes him a, a dual threat. So we have our hands full because they multiple on offense. Of course, they can run the ball, get in two backs, but they also can go empty and throw it. So we have our hands full. We got to make sure we can get lined up and execute and uh, make some plays. 
Coach, is the secret out on uh, Randall Menard? The last few games have been relatively quiet. What are teams doing to him, and what does he need to adjust? I don't think they're doing anything. You know, I, I just think that, I mean, we got so many receivers. Uh, you got to understand, now the, the last two games, um, one was against Clark Atlanta where we ran the ball the whole second half. And then against Grambling, you had lead off. So, you know, they have to pick their poison at what they want to do and how they want to do it. So if they if they give us the matchups, it's all about matchups. I think we can decide, you know, who we want to throw the ball to based on matchups. And if we get one-on-one matchups, then I think we got four or five, even six or seven receivers that can make a play. So it's not necessarily going to be one guy all the time.